Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and the Deep Sleep API and how we can use the API and what's the benefit and certainly how to wake up our ESP32. Inside our ESP32 we have the RTC device or real-time clock that runs even if everything on the ESP32 is shut down. So we can use this device without losing any special data that stores in the RTC memory, maybe some timer related functions. And we also have the benefit running our ESP32 in a very low power mode. So the current consumption is in the micro amp or even in the nano ampere range. In our API we have three main blocks for using the deep sleep mode. First of all we are using the deep sleep mode with a GPIO related functionality or we use the deep sleep mode with a timer or we can use also the ultra low power coprocessor but that's not part of my video today. So let's start with the GPIO part. First we have an API call for configure the power domains that is useful to tell the RTC which part of the RTC is on during the deep sleep mode. So if we for an example switch off the GPIOs then it's obvious that we cannot wake up our ESP32 with a GPIO port. So we have to to configure the power domain that all the GPIOs we use is switched on during deep sleep mode with this power domain config function. Next we can configure one GPIO port to wake up our ESP32 and we can set the level that is used to wake up so we can wake up our ESP on a high level or we can also wake up our ESP on a low level. Next functionality in the API we can also use many GPIO ports to wake up our ESP32 and we have to send a mask of GPIO ports to our API and we can also use an AND functionality so every GPIO port have to set in a certain level and we can use with the AND function only a low level or we can use an OR functionality and that's only possible with a high level. And the last call in our API is the enter point to start the deep sleep mode so we can start our deep sleep. And here's some example code. First we set our GPIO port, for instance the GPIO port 0, because most of the modules have one button on the GPIO 0, so I use this for this example. Then we set the power domain to let our peripheral, and that includes the GPIOs, on during deep sleep. Then we configure some pull-ups on our GPIO port. I enable the high pull up and disable the low pull down. Then I configure the GPIO port 0 to wake up our ESP32 on a low level because most of the modules use the switch to ground and so we can use our GPIO pin 0 to wake up our ESP. And then the last function we call is start the deep sleep mode and that's all. And in the timer part of our API we have three functions. First we can set the wake up timer that is useful if we combine a GPIO wake up with a timer or we can use the functionality to set a timer and instantly start the deep sleep mode. Or the third one we know from the GPIO part that is useful if we set a timer and 
start the deep sleep mode later in our program. And here also an example, we can set our duration to maybe 10 seconds to wake up. Then we maybe store the last wake up in our RTC memory, so we can use it later after waking up from the deep sleep mode. And in this example, we can get the actual seconds until the last reset and we print it out on the screen and then we call the deep sleep mode with our 10 seconds wake up delay. And here the practical part of the demonstration. First let us clean our example code, then we build it all. It should only take a few seconds to build all the code. Then I bring the ESP32 to boot flash mode and flash the firmware and start also the debug monitor. So we're waiting for a reset and I push the reset button. And we can see the ESP32 is going to deep sleep mode and waiting for any wake up call. So we can use our flash button or the GPIO pin zero to ground to start the ESP32. So I do it again. And every time I press the flash button, you can see the ESP32 is wake up once again and again and again. So this is this example. And now I show you the timer example. And now I build all the code with a special switch, switch on eight task to do the building. So it's now don't need one minute to compile. I can compile all my code in a few seconds. So let's see, maybe 10 to 15 seconds for all our code. So 14 seconds, that's nice. And now we do the same with a new terminal. And now let's flash our timer example, bring the ESP32 to flash mode, start also make flash monitor and do a reset. And now our ESP32 start up every 10 seconds. So we see 11 seconds since last reset and also 11 seconds since last boot. And now the seconds since last reset are counting up, but our count since the last boot stays in the range of 11 seconds. So let's wait 11 seconds again. So maybe we can calculate that our booting of our device takes about one second. And it shows that it's really constant at 11 seconds. And the last example for today, I combined the timing and also the GPIO driven wake up from the deep sleep. So we have our GPIO on pin zero and we also have a sleep duration of 10 seconds. So every interrupt that came first start our ESP32. And now we use the other timer API call from the deep sleep mode. We just set the timer duration. Then we configure also our GPIO and the last call we start the deep sleep mode. Then do a clean building of our example and wait also a few seconds to build all the code. Then let's bring the ESP32 to download mode. Do a make flash monitor. And reset our ESP32. So first of all, let's wait for the timer event to happen. Just a 10 seconds. And now we can also use our GPIO pin zero to wake up. So whatever came first, if the timer is set or if our ESP32 GPIO pin zero is pressed, it all wakes up. So I press and press and press. So press again, press again. 
or we can wait for the timer to boot. So just 10 seconds, that's it. And as always, thanks for watching today and all the source code can be found on GitHub. So look in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. So have a nice day. Bye bye.